John, John, we're throwing this away at her. Just going in the trash. Alright, me and Kuma, there's those two. I had dignity. I had dignity, it is gone now. Edder with utter. Eddie, letter? Edder? Edder? With utter. Edder with cheddar. Why are you so dumb? Edder with butter! Disqualify! Disqualify! It's Edder with butter! Yay, he did it! It just feels weird to say that like this is all about me. It just that yeah. sounded that sounded weird to say. No, I know you could say. Um... Yo, what up? I'm Muma. Today on this episode of Focus, we're going to be talking a little bit more about kind of what's on the outside of the competition and like the the way some players carry themselves like outside of when we're just competing. And me personally being like someone who enjoys streaming a lot and like interacting with uh, my community a lot. I think that streaming is so important to me because I, in high school, I, I did deal with like depression a little bit. And I also was like somewhat of an outsider for the most part because I, I grew up in a very uh, conservative part of Ohio. So my, my sexuality kind of like made me, I guess, like I said, a bit of an outsider. So a lot of the time I looked to video games and like streamers and streaming communities to really give me a place that like I can just hang out. I mean, I obviously had like my close friends in high school, but not a ton because like I said, it was just like Southern conservative Ohio, which was a bit of a struggle at times. So I did look to a lot of streamers and like communities to provide like, like I said, an escape really. And I really enjoy that like, it, it's my turn to be able to do that for other people, you know? Like I, I understand that I am under like a bit of a, a spotlight for being one of the few or one of the only LGBT players in the Overwatch League, so I understand that there's probably people out there like me who like look up to me and think like, hey, if this guy can do it, so can I, or hey, this is a player who happens to be gay who's making like, who's doing big things for the league really. So being able to like build that community that like can also, I guess, use me as an escape, it, I just feel like I'm giving back since like so many streamers helped me when I was struggling. So it's cool to be able to like do that back for people. Like, do you feel like it's almost like a responsibility, or it's like for you since other people did that for you? Or I mean, not exactly. I feel like it's just what I'm happy to be doing. You know, I mean, like maybe maybe it's a little bit of a responsibility because I feel I, I'm so thankful for the people that I used to watch and the communities that I grew up in, really and I'm like really thankful for them. So it's really nice to be able to provide that back for people. But I like just the messages that I get from like people that are just like thanking me for like what I do and the way I act and stuff. It, it's super awesome because I know that like, I, I read the messages that I get on Twitter all the time and I get so many of them and I, I read like basically all of them. And I, I, it's just so crazy that I can like see, I see myself in them honestly, because like the things that people type to me and send to me, are, are the exact same things that I would be sending to the people that I looked up to in high school. And just being able to help people the same way that people helped me is a, it's quite the great experience. But I also at the same time am not confident enough on any like DPS or supports to really like want to stream it, I guess. Holy shit, I'm nuts. I actually just killed their entire team, man. Oh my god, I'm so good! How do you beat me? How do you do it? See you later, Rakeem. See you later, Guido. Oh, she wasted beam. I'm actually free farming, dude. What the hell? Am I the best Junkrat in the world? Um, so I started streaming back when I was a competitive Team Fortress 2 player. Um, I remember very vividly, I started streaming actually on my birthday, um, back when I was playing TF2, because it was like, for my birthday, all I, all I asked my parents for was to like pay a little bit more to upgrade our internet so that I actually was able to stream. And the reason that I really wanted to do that is because I really enjoy like people watching me play. And then also, I remember back when I was like in high school, which was about the same time period as when I was competing in TF2, 
uh, I really watched a lot of streams and in high school I, I did battle with like depression a little bit so being able to like watch streams and join like the communities that a lot of streamers present and have uh, was really a source of an escape for me honestly and along with video games and competing as a whole those two when you put them together it just helped me a lot uh, personally really was it was it hard at the start like when you try and start streaming and you have like no fans really like was it hard to grow an audience and get people to watch or do you enjoy it regardless um honestly i enjoyed it regardless uh it, it was certainly a little different when i first started streaming i always had like ever since i started streaming i always had uh, i started with like roughly 50 viewers just because i was already like a competitive player so i didn't have to start from like the very bare bones of like actually being a completely new streamer with zero viewers i at least had somewhat of a following to like put me on the grid a little um, very quickly, I learned something from a streamer that I, one of the streamers who helped me the most when I was battling with depression in high school. Uh, one of the things he would always say is to not pay attention to the viewer number. And I think that is the one thing that I, I learned the most that helped me the most uh, enjoy streaming a lot more. Um, ever since I, when I first started and I had like 50 viewers to now when I get over a thousand, uh, I, I never look at the viewer accounts because I want to be able to like be putting on the same show uh, for if there was only one person as I would want to be putting on for if there was like a thousand people watching. So getting over that barrier of like really caring about like, oh, I really hope that a lot of people tune in today has really, it really helped me not only enjoy streaming more, but just become a better streamer. One thing that you mentioned um, when you were just talking is like uh, putting on a show. Does it feel like when you stream, does it feel like you have to like perform or can it be like a casual thing where you're just hanging out? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess I guess that was kind of silly wording for me. When I stream personally, I, I literally it's just me sitting down on my computer playing video games. Like I, I don't think I put on much of a show. I think that I interact with chat a lot. But I think that's more of like, it's, it kind of reminds me of if you're just like, you know, playing video games with friends and you're just in like Discord or something speaking to them as if they were your friends and you're just like playing games with friends. Opposed to like, there, there are obviously streamers who try to be entertaining and put on a show. But my stream, I honestly feel like it's more just like me playing the game to be playing the game while also just interacting with people that I almost like consider my friends basically. So relating to that, do you have um, people who are like mods in your chat or just people who tune in all the time who you've kind of like almost developed like friendships with because they're fans of your stream? Oh, certainly. Yeah, I'm, I, I think there's actually quite a handful of people that I do consider or that started out as my fans who I, I definitely consider friends now. Like I have, uh, I, I guess, fans slash now friends who live in Europe who are actually like flying to Overwatch League matches to like come watch our games. And like, yeah, they started as fans as me in TF2 or whatever, but like, I'm going to like find the time to hang out with them and like, I'm going to be going to like dinner with them and just like hanging out with them because I mean, like they've supported me for so long and they've been like viewers of the stream for so long and moderators on my stream for so long that I, I have talked to them outside of like just the normal confines of streaming and like actually have like built genuine friendships with these people. And I, I like look forward to meeting them just like how I'm sure they look forward to meeting me again, you know, stuff like that. This is just more general, but like how often do you stream um, with like your guys' crazy busy schedule and how much would you like to stream? I mean, that, that, that question has always been like a, a tough one for me because as much as I do enjoy streaming, my number one priority is being the best player that I can be in the Overwatch League. So I, I do spend tons of time like competing and practicing with the team. And when you do stream, at least for me, I tend to focus on the game even if even if it's a little bit less I, I do focus less on the game which makes it harder to give my 100% of the game which is usually what I want to be doing when I'm playing because I want to be the best player that I can be so I don't always stream as often as I would like to but that's just a mix of me wanting to like I'm, I'm always going to be a competitor before a streamer what is what the f What is What the f is happening? Like watch. Pay attention to my primal ends. They're both in the air. They're both falling. My primal ends. Then the roadhog falls off the map. So I get the ult charge for it. Then the mercy falls off the map. So I get the ult charge for it. I'm gonna try here. Do you think years in the future when you're no longer competing at the highest level, would you would streaming be something you would want to do full time or would you lose that passion that you have for it? I think 
uh, something that I've always thought about in my life is like before I started following esports and being able to be an esports player. Um, throughout my entire time in high school, I was like thinking about what I was going to do with my future, and I never imagined that I would be like an esports player. I always had plans to go to college and stuff, but now that I've actually like experienced what it's like to be an esports player, and I, I've experienced like the fun, how, how much fun and how exciting and fulfilling it is, I honestly, in a dream world, I would be able to make like stuff relating to video games the rest of my life, honestly. I, I mean, I'm 19, so I'm young, so I, can, I, I have a long future as a competitor, hopefully. I, I would, I think I'm a pretty smart player, so I think that one day I can maybe, you know, do like a coaching something or an analyst or some sorts. But I mean, streaming is like, it's, I, I was a diehard streamer, like acting as if I was a full-time streamer, despite not being able to be a full-time streamer for a very long time before I was actually like a super competitive player. But so I, I would not mind going back to that uh, if, it, if I had to. But for as long as I can, I want to be focused like on competing. So since you're a professional Overwatch player, most of the time you usually stream Overwatch. Do you ever feel like you wish you could stream other games? Or like, do you feel like you are obligated to stream Overwatch since you're a pro? Uh, that, that's always been like a, a sort of touchy subject. I, I have streamed other games than Overwatch and back when I competed in Team Fortress 2, I did stream other games than Team Fortress 2 periodically. I, there's certainly times where I kind of do wish I could stream other games. I mean, I, I can stream other games. I have streamed Hearthstone before. It was a pretty enjoyable experience. I'm not very good at the game, so it kind of takes away from it. I feel like, personally, in order to put on the best stream possible, uh, I should stream Overwatch, just because, you know, that's what most people want to see me for. And at the end of the day, Overwatch is also the game I want to play most. So there are times where I, I just don't feel like playing Overwatch, and I usually end up just not streaming. But there are times where I don't feel like Overwatch playing Overwatch, but I also really feel like streaming, so I will just stream other games. But not as, not as often as I, I really could, you know? <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm dying, but you're not. I what have a tram. What the f am I dying to? Where oh, is that shit. dragon? Is it invisible? Fast and rest. Mind you guys. What the f? Yo, Lucio, you want to come be cheeky with me? All right, me and Lucio are gonna be cheeky. Get ready. Uh, I'm gonna call for a speed in a second. Speed now. Wow. Yoinks. Yoinks! Uh, like I said, as much as I do enjoy streaming and as great as an experience as it is, I am a competitor first and everything this week went into, you know, playing. We had a we had our match against Mayhem and we also had a match against Fuel. I pull. Hello. Tracer 1. Yeah. Yeah. He's five, I think. Nice. I'm gonna die. I'm dead. Hello. Don't give up. Thank you. I can talk to you and Rex a little bit. We're super close, high ground. Oh, yeah, Texas point, Texas point. I might die. He has to die. He's half health. <laughs> Somebody heal the rip tire. Go get the health pack. Oh my god. Wow. Look at that. It's, it's a mercy oh, statue. Gosh. So sweet. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you like it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Jake, what is it? It's Gandalf. <laughs> it's like Gandalf. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, good, thank you. Thanks. Wait, Benny, what did you get? I just got a Mercy statue. That's oh, awesome. Oh my god, it has multiple faces. I told you about it. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, so it has like a mad face and like a... Those are like 40 bucks. That's awesome. Monkey's up top right, I'm zapping him. I almost have Primor. Make sure I stay alive. I'm jumping towards the Widow to pressure her backwards. She has a grapple. All right, just play the coastal. The Mayhem match, we were actually, we, we prepared for it pretty hard because we, Mayhem's definitely on the up. Like their new player signings have definitely been really good for them and it seems like they're really just like starting to gel together which is kind of ironic considering you know they used to have six people now that they have more than six it seems like they're gelling even faster which is kind of weird because you would expect that when you have six players you'd be able to gel really fast but they are actually like really on the up right now which I, I know it's hard to tell from their record but like they're actually like all really good players and their their synergies actually really coming together so that match was definitely a little bit uh, we, we definitely prepared for it. The Houston Outlaws, certainly a fan favorite here as we were setting up. As soon as anyone came out, they were cheering for them. I mean, the fans in the crowd, they're always here cheering for the Houston Outlaws. 
in the front row. And already Florida down a couple, but Houston losing more members on the point here. Florida may just take this one right off the bat. Manhattan down though, awesome guy kind of turning it up, but now Jake pulls out the Dragon Blade, cuts down to supercharge it along with the person who placed it, and Houston all over point A now. Zenyatta ult's gonna be up the go. moment. Here comes the Dragon Blade going after Zupa. Gets one support kill, looking for another one. On to Zebisai, finds it. Jacob pulls supports again. The pulse bomb will not find Zupe, but guess Whoa. what? Full map will. Well, you know, if a small explosion doesn't work, send in the big one. Florida gets one tick already, though. They've got three people on the point right now, and only Mooma and Coolmat left from Outlaws to defend this one. Make it just Mooma now. Coolmat out of commission. They've just got to deal with Linkster. He's down, off the point, pushed away. There goes Muma, one tick taken already. Florida in a fantastic place to take this map. Oh, it's so close. They just need one more percent to do it. Dealing with Bonnie and they've got it. Florida Mayhem will come in and roll Temple of Anubis. No, I, Florida can still defend. They can go for it. They're coming into the very end here. Ah, oh, but they lose Awesome Guy. Nice shot again from Linkser. Oh, and, oh boy. <laughs> Linkser and Rockus sniping everybody here. And All right. Cool map will cut off the pressure on the Linkser. Now Rockus down, but they're going to get Awesome Guy and Zebesai in return here. Drez comes in on the Rockus anyway, and that's going to be point B, I think. Valkyrie used by Zebesai to try to heal everyone. They're going to layer the support ultimate. It's a nice shot on the Zebesai. Linkser waited for him to go in down to the Rez on the Awesome Guy, and he was ready. That's going to be it, man. Houston Outlaws finishes it with a ton of time left on the clock. Florida may be in a little bit of trouble here. Tavik trying to turn it around with the Dragon Blade, though. He's got the Reflect, comes in with the kill on the Linkser and the Rocket. That is big. Cool Matt, half health. Oh, he gets Bonnie as well with the final swipe. It is time. Going into Rockus. sets up the Reflect to avoid getting picked off. Gets both supports in one slash. No oh, one's on the planet. No one was on the payload in Houston. I, I landed on the high ground originally, but since you since you tranced, I, I landed on the low ground to get it. I think the but like if I landed on the high ground, I, I won't hundred. I'm, you would unless you're primal. Then and we kind of got experience on like specific points on how to engage a little bit better. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call Crystal first. Three, two, one. Houston, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> it's scary to watch. Clockwork <laughs> low. It's gonna be another kill for Sia player on that McCree. Make that two, man. Oh, Houston picking up a couple kills here, actually. In the last moments, they're trying to swing it around. And great news for the Houston Outlaws. Both of the support ults were used at the point while they were just picking off people, trying to make their way there in time, and Houston is gonna run it all the way back. Awesome guy comes back just in time. Florida not giving up just yet. Getting a little bit more control percent, but can't flip it. Deep into overtime now, and Houston able to finally take it. They take the lead in this series. I was gonna pop it right at the end configuration tank, but he gets hooked. Oh, point blank! You don't want to pull that towards you, and that's why. And we'll see if Jake can pick up anything with this rip tire. Oh yeah, there goes awesome guy. Rockus gets a kill on his MSI as well, and Houston keeps rolling forward. Muma's still there with the primal rage too, with only a few meters, he can push everybody off. I think so. I think that's exactly what he's gonna do. Side player looping around the side like we see a lot. Muma goes way airborne. Riptire comes in and takes out awesome guy, and there's a whole hog for Rockus to just keep pushing people back. And that's the it. Houston Outlaws are that's dominating it. this defense. Yep, Florida not even able to get to the payload. Houston Outlaws will win. Our, our match against Fuel was kind of the same. We, we know that, that that match, we don't exactly consider Fuel to be our rivals, but since it is another Texas team, we do like that, that match. Every single player on our team is going to be putting in a little bit more, just a little bit higher level of effort, just because that match matters so much to like all of us, just from a personal like, hey, we still run Texas. So we did, we did focus on that match a lot. Honestly, I think we could like let them in deeper there and just be like, play it. I mean, I guess they have a huge ult advantage, so maybe we don't want to let them. That's <laughs> Scoffed! <laughs> Scoffed! Mess up or what is it? No, he. Look at all these legs. I'm in four servers to put it all together. Okay, I don't give a First of all. Oh, you do? I'm $100. Wow, not the only game. Okay, I can show you my Counter-Strike hours. I can show you my Battlefield hours. What's this? I can show you so many hours. I, I guarantee you I played more games than you. I guarantee you. We get it. I'm older than you, first of all. It doesn't matter. I've been playing games a lot longer than you. Not a lot longer. Like five years. 
Oh, man. I came out of the womb playing Tetris. Another life at eight chips and wrong place, wrong time. You're definitely dead. Both of them. The support's pinned against the wall. And well, as soon as Linkser goes for the blade, he gets tired of waiting. Chips pulls the trigger, but that's not stopping him. Three kills. Harry Hook is here to heal. This is a winnable situation for Dallas as Linkser is just barely gonna hang on by a threat. Never mind, deleted. And they have just been dying one by one on the point. The May is not gonna be enough, and wow. Links are now have, having to hold that closed OG angle. Oh my god! Him, OG had to stay alive. He had 97%. He was so close to Primal, but Matt snipes him down, and that might just be it. Gotta make sure to keep some presence on the point, though. The last thing you want to do is give this up, and you have to be mindful. It's only 33%, but it does seem they're getting the kills they need. But Links are and Jay combined for two. Oh, and it's not gonna happen. Links are right now getting body shot, getting whittled down a little bit, still trying to find a target. As effect goes in and dies. Moment just goes, I mean, just goes right on through because he's busy stomping the supports into the ground. <laughs> he's Mooma with a 3k, gets his primal rage, gets out of it, gets a stomp on the AKM at the end, and that will open up all the space in the world. But AKM's gonna be joining with effect, they're gonna try to force a nod situation. Yeah, and Rockus had no idea there was gonna be someone else there, and they're able to take down two. This res gets absolutely denied to AKM doing work, both supports down. What is this? What is going on? This is chaos, and already the fight continuing as the self destruct gets thrown in by Mickey. Not gonna find any kills cool mats neither oh this one is a brawl the next couple kills could decide things mickey's gonna get out of mech d max deleted Whew. like considering you guys didn't contest cart literally for I the entirety that, of second test that. but that's no. like I forget I who's getting that. pocketed that is easily that. the worst mistake we slowed on our tank Jeez, tempo a little help yeah, everything because like, i haven't been, I've been feeling as much as like i should i think and that's because i think our tank tempo is so we're so focused on just trying to take that fight as fast as we can the stars at night are big and bright deep in the heart of texas who runs texas we run texas the all out brawl here on the point the all Boink denying him! And there's Clockwork trying to go for it, but he gets denied by Chip Saiyan. Yeah, it was a really nice position to try that barrage though, because when he does get killed, he falls down on the ledge and they're able to resurrect him. He's back into the mix and takes down Mickey. I think Dow's gonna take the stage similar. It's looking good, MoMA. Not gonna make it in time. Or on the far out, and nice. the snag. Perfectly done. Patience. He's rewarded for it. Linkser and AKM dangerously low as well. Somehow we are able to get the res done from Chip Saiyan, but he's not able to make it up in time to keep AKM alive. Rockets raining in. Harry Hook already feeling the heat. AKM with the high ground though. Connects one. Looking for the follow up. You gotta go for the reload. Clockwork even trying to get in on it. Or cool Matt rather. Yeah, you gotta hit two in a row though when you got the pocket. And there it is. There's a finish on AKM. Clockwork. Effect is alive. Effect could try and tap the point, but no, he's denied by Linkser. Linkser also takes a shot. Clockwork trying to bring this back on his own. Clockwork Clockwork just knocked out three. Clockwork, a one-man wrecking crew, is going to stay alive as well. And at the very least, he's going to be alive on the point. A cleanup there from Rockus, and they're unable to pull this back. That is going to be the res coming in from Harry Hook. Linkster is gone. OG is there, but Clockwork right now is on a tear. The pulse bomb is in, but it misses the target. So now he just needs to stay alive. He's dropped low. And it's overtime now. Nobody there to touch the point for Dallas. And the Houston Outlaws will win this series. It is gonna be a quick death there for OGE. All the chain heals going through. Cool Matt even going for the self-destruct over. And a hard defeat here for the Dallas Fuel. Houston Outlaws, they reign supreme in Texas. With how tough the, or how tightly packed the Overwatch League schedule is, it's a little bit hard to really be super excited and happy about wins. But every time we play Fuel, and come out on top, it, there's always a, there's that little bit more level of excitement than a normal win, just because it's like, like I said, we, we still run Texas, you know? Um, we all, we, all our players on our team, we, a lot of us have like history with the players on Fuel and like friendships and I mean, obviously rivalries. So being able to beat them and maintain our spawn at the top of Texas is always a, a very gratifying feeling. <laughs> I 
I mean, everyone's priority right now is just making sure that we can that we do everything that we possibly can in order to make sure that the next few weeks go as smoothly as possible because there's so many playoff implications in the next coming weeks that like every all all these middle of the pack games like they are so important for us to win because if not we will like not make playoffs actually so everyone is like the amount of focus that we're putting into the game is actually just on a whole nother level because it's actually just so important that we get these wins.